Alright, today we are going to be looking at 13.3, trig functions of any angle. So we're going to start off by graphing, which is a review, and then we want to find the reference angle, which is new. So we have 160 degrees, we know that this is 90, this is 180, we've got 270, 360. So if I want 160 degrees, that's just 20 degrees shy of 180. So that is going to be our 160 degree angle mark. The reference angle is the angle made with the x-axis and it's always, always, always going to be with the x-axis and it's always going to be to the closest x-axis. So in this case this would be our reference angle. So what is the measure of the angle between the one that we made and the axis? Well, we just said that that's 20 degrees away. So our reference angle is equal to 20 degrees. If it's not that obvious or you don't see that, just take the axis that's closest and you subtract the angle that you have and you see that you end up with that 20 degree angle measure. Next one, we've got 230, 90, 180, 270, 360. So we go around. Now we know it's going to be between 180 and 270, and I think about which one is it going to be closer to. Well, I think about halfway, 45, that's 225. So it's going to be a little bit more than halfway between those two angles. And that is the measure of 230 degrees. My reference angle, as we said before, is always going to be with the x-axis and the closest x-axis, so this would be our reference angle. I want to know what is the angle measure, how many degrees is it from 180 to 230. Now the last one we did 180 minus 260 because 180 was further than 160. This time 230 is further, so if you don't know just that angle off the top of your head, 230 minus 180 leaves us with 50 degrees. So our reference angle here is going to be 50 degrees. 5 pi over 3, back to those radians. And again, as I had said in the previous video, you should know where radians are located on your circle. You should know this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3, three pi over 2, and this is 2 pi. But if you feel more comfortable, you can always convert into degrees. And when you convert into degrees, you find that that's 300 degrees. Here's 90, here's 180, here's 270, 360. We know that 300 is just going to be 30 degrees past 270. The reference angle, not made with the y-axis, but made with the x-axis. And the closest one, the one on that side, so this would be my reference angle. This angle, as we said before, was 300. I want to know the distance between 300 to 360. 360 is farther along than 300. So we do 360 minus 300 in case you don't have to show this if you don't need to. Our reference angle in this case is going to be 60 degrees. Okay. So that's all the new part there was, just finding that reference angle. So remember, it's always the terminal side and the closest x-axis, the angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. Evaluating trig functions. Alright, so I'm going to give you a point and we're going to evaluate the trig functions. The only difference is this point isn't going to have numbers. So let's make a circle. I know my circle's awesome. Here is the point on my circle. Let's change that. Over here. X comma y. Now if I want my sine of theta, I need an angle measure. And there's a very specific angle measure that I need to have. I need to have a right angle. So I'm going to create my triangle. We know that that point comes from a terminal side, which is coming from the vertex. I drop down my altitude and there is my 90 degree angle. When I am plotting the point, the x is the horizontal distance from here to here. x is always the distance moving left and right, and that is the x in the coordinate. Your y is the distance that's being moved up. 
your y distance. Now your hypotenuse, because we have a circle, that is the radius of your circle. Okay? So this would be our theta. If I want sine of theta, it's opposite over hypotenuse, so I want y over r. If I want cosecant of theta, we remember that's just the reciprocal, so instead of y over r, that's r over y. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, that is x over r. Reciprocal, r over x. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, so that's y over x. And then we go ahead and do the reciprocal, giving us x over y. And we could also remember that we have a right angle, so we could always use Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side. Our x squared plus our y squared is always going to be equal to our r squared. So in a given point, the x coordinate squared plus the y coordinate squared is going to give you the radius squared of the circle. So let's go ahead and do one of these problems. I'm going to give you the point 5, 12. So we start at the origin, just like you were plotting at any other point. We're going to go 5 units to the right and up 12 units. So that's our given point. We draw our triangle. We always, just like before, we're using our reference angle. So the reference angle is between the terminal side, which is the side that we created, and the x-axis. So this right here is the reference angle, which is the theta that we are going to reference for this problem. Your x, y, remember your x is the horizontal distance. Your y is the vertical distance. Now I want to find my radius because if I'm going to do my six trig functions, I need to have all three numbers. So we do our 5 squared plus our 12 squared is equal to our radius squared, and we get that our radius is equal to 13. So we do our sine. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 12 over 13. Cosine of theta adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 5 over 13, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, so tan of theta, our reference angle again, is 12 over 5. Now remember in this chapter we learned six new trig functions, our cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine, so 13 over 12. The secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so 5 over 13 becomes 13 over 5. Cotangent of theta, reciprocal of tangent, gives us 5 over 12. Next one, we have our point negative 2, 6. So just like you would plot any other point, we always start at the origin. Negative means we're going to go left 2. Negative 6 means we're going to go down 6. So here would be the point that I am plotting. I create that terminal side. The reference angle is going to be created with that terminal side and the closest part of the x-axis. So the reference angle would be located right there. We drop that altitude. This is our point, negative 2, negative 6. Remember, negative 2, the x is representing the distance moved left. The y, the negative 6, is indicating that we have moved down 6. Now we need to find our radius. So we've got a negative 2 squared plus a negative 6 squared is equal to our radius squared. So that gives us 4 plus 36. Our radius squared is equal to 40. Not as nice as our last one, it's not an exact answer, so I have to square root, break down your radical. You have to make sure that your radical is broken down to simplest form. So we get that our radius is 2 square root 10. Now we know we have a square root, we know that our sine, cosine, tangent stuff is not going to necessarily be as easy as it was last time. Still we have our reference angle, we have that triangle created by the terminal side from the given point, dropping the altitude and using that reference angle. So the sine of our theta, the reference angle, opposite over hypotenuse. 
So that's a negative 6 over 2 square root 10. To rationalize, we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 10. And then that gives us a negative 6 root 10. 2 times 10 gives us 20. We reduce a negative 6 over 20 to get a negative 3 root 10 all over, oop, all over 10. Now you can reduce at the end. You may also be asking yourself, well, could I have reduced right here? In that first step, negative 6 and 2 does reduce down to a negative 3 over the square root of 10. Then you could have rationalized giving you a negative 3 root 10 all over 10. So you can reduce in the beginning or you can reduce in the end. Your choice. All right, cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I noticed that I'm going to reduce right away, so that's a negative 1 over root 10. We rationalize by multiplying top and bottom by root 10, which gives us a negative root 10 all over 10 that negative more obvious. And then our tangent of theta is our opposite over adjacent. Negative 6 over negative 2 giving us a positive 3. So finally an easy one. Now we have cosecant. Now we could just take the reciprocal of this, but if I just take the reciprocal of that, I have to rationalize again. So in this case, I'm actually going to look back towards the beginning. We had a negative 6 over 2 root 10, which reduced down to a negative 3 over root 10. At this point, I'm going to take the reciprocal of that to give me a 10 over a negative 3. That way, I don't have to worry about rationalizing again. My secant of theta, again, we got to the point where we were down to a negative 1 over root 10. I'm going to take the reciprocal of that piece to give me a negative, a root 10 over a negative 1, which is just a negative square root of 10. And last tangent, we can go ahead to the end here. 3 is nice and easy. The reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. So you could go ahead and do the reciprocal of your answers. Just remember that you're going to have to end up rationalizing for a second time. So it's totally your choice when you choose to take that reciprocal. Okay, our very last one, we have the point negative 6, 0. So I'm moving left negative 6, I'm moving up down 0. Here we have a problem. We don't have a triangle, but we do have those patterns from the previous page, so I know that the first thing I'm going to do is find that radius. So we've got a negative 6 squared plus 0 squared is equal to radius squared. Radius squared is equal to 36, so our radius is equal to 6. And that makes sense because if this is on a circle, it is that radius from the center. That distance is 6. And you should remember that r, your radius, should always be positive. So we think back to our sine cosine tangent. Hopefully you remember that sine is going to be your y over r, which is 0 over 6, which gives us 0 as our sine. Cosine of theta is x over r, which is a negative 6 over 6, which gives us a negative 1. Tangent, which is the same as it's always been, is y over x, so that gives us 0 over a negative 6, which is 0. Our cosecant of theta, we take the reciprocal, it's r over y, which gives us 6 over 0, which is going to be undefined. So for this point, we have an undefined cosecant. Our secant of theta is r over x, so that gives us 6 over a negative 6, which gives us a negative 1 again. And tangent of theta, that's x over y, giving us a negative 6 over 0, once again giving us an undefined tangent. So you can have undefined values 
when you're looking at sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of points on circles. And we finally hit that 15 minute mark. We are done with our video for today.